Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sneha. Today I'm creating yet another three looks one palette video and the palette of choice today is the ABH collaboration with Jackie Aina which is this beautiful beautiful palette. Now of course I've created more looks with this palette but just for this tutorial I've created three looks and I've tried to use as many shades as possible for these tutorials just so you get an idea of how these different colors look on my skin tone. So if you'd like to see how to create this and two other looks please continue watching. For this next look, we're going to create a red gold halo eye look. So I'm first taking my Wayne Goss brush number 16 and I'm going to take the shade edges and apply that into my crease, gradually building it up. Then I'm using my Kitco brush 1.7. This is one of my favorites ever since I've purchased it. Just going to use it to buff out the edges of the shade edges. <laughs> then I'm going to take a little bit of ginger on the same brush and just use it as a transition between edges and my skin tone. Next I'm using one of my favorite flat brushes. This is the Esam W21. And I'm going to use it dry with the shade Wigglies. So applying it on the inner and the outer corner to create a halo eye. So I'm going to try and look straight and apply it just till where my pupils start and end. So till here, taking some more and then from the outer corner. Just going to use a mirror just so my eyeshadow placement is correct. Like that. So I'm just going to leave that gap in between where my pupil is straight above. I'm going to repeat the same on the lower lash line. I'm using the same brush but on its side. So on the tip instead of like that flat. Okay, and the same for the inner corner of the eye. Next, I'm going to use my Hakuhodo J146 brush. I'm going in with the shade Credit. I'm going to use that to deepen up the outer corner and also the inner corner, just very slightly in the inner corner, but mostly at the outer corner right here. So just dabbing it right there. Gradually build it up because it is quite a pigmented shade and you don't want to cover the entire wiggly shade that you have on. And also lightly taking it into the crease just on that outer corner. Then going back in with that first brush, Wayne Gauss brush number 16, to blend out the edges. Okay, now for the bottom lash line and for the inner corner, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. This is the Refer 03 brush. Just applying it close to the lash line on the outside, like so. And then repeating the same for the inner corner. Just applying it right here. Don't be afraid to take it on the tear duct area. So we do want this inner corner to be dark. So like so. You've seen that there's some depth right there at the inner corner and also at the outer corner. I do want to blend out the brown and the crease a little bit more. Now for the next shade Zam, because it's kind of a crumbly texture similar to Dwellers and also Trust Issues, just be careful when you use it. If you want to avoid major fallout, I would recommend using a liquid mixing medium. So something like the Meron mixing medium is great. So that's what I've done for this eye. And as you can see, there's none or hardly any flex that you can see on my cheeks. So I'm just going to do the same on this eye. The brush I'm using is Refer 02. And I'm going to get just the tip of the brush damp in the mixing medium. And then what I do is just run it on that corner of that eyeshadow instead of applying it to the whole pan just in case there's some hardening or anything so that's any time I'm using it wet so I just basically 
run it against the eyeshadow like so. so it forms like a cream paste just look straight and apply it straight down on that gap like so just making sure that your pupil is right there and then repeating the same on the lower lash line Now between the edges, I just go along the edges like that and then also go back in with the brush we used for the Big Lee's eyeshadow. Just so it doesn't abruptly end and start. And then the smaller brush, which is the Hakuhodo J146, just to blend in the crease. Then if you feel like you need more eyeshadow right at the center, just apply a little bit more. So that's the eyeshadows done. For my waterline, I'm going to use the Urban Decay Eyeliner in the shade Whiskey. I'm going to use it on the outer corner, essentially wherever we have the red, and then also on the inner corner right there. We're going to leave that gold area empty for now because we're going to go in with a different pencil. So this again adds depth to the waterline right at the inner and the outer corner. And then for the center, I'm going to use the Sigma eyeliner in the shade Drift. So any gold eyeliner pencil will work for this. Just applying it right above where we have the gold eyeshadow. And then finishing off with mascara, I'm using my MAC Extended Play Giga Black Lash Mascara for my bottom lashes. And then for my top lashes, I'm using the NARS Climax Mascara. And that is the eye look complete. Now to finish off the look, I've paired it with the NARS blush in Gilda, which looks like this. I have just a light amount on my cheeks. And on my lips, I have the Isim Lip Liner Duo, and I have used the darker shade of the nude pencil. And then I've combined two of the Revlon Balm Stains. So first I've gone in with this deeper shade. This is the shade Smitten. So this shade just added some depth to the otherwise very bright color. So if you look at this color, it's a very bright orange. So together they created this look. And that's it. That is this look complete. Now for this look, unfortunately the day was very gloomy, so I had to use indoor lighting, so therefore the coloring looks a little odd. But there's not much I can do, especially as we go through winter, so please bear with me. But we're first going to start off with the shade Ginger. And I'm going to take that on my Sigma E35 brush, and I'm going to apply that in my crease area, then gradually building the color up. And also here I was testing a different lens for my camera, so I'm sorry, but I will be going in and out of focus especially at the start of the tutorial. I'm also running the same shade Ginger along my lower lash line and I'm switching to the Refer 01 brush. Next I'm using the Esam W36 brush with the shade Credit. I'm going to apply it on its side to the outer corner of my eye to deepen up that portion and then I'm going to flip it to its side or the pointed edge to apply the same shade into the crease of my eye. Then I'm going back in with the Refer Brush 01 to blend out the edges. And then using just the edge of Esam W36, I'm going back in with the shade Credit and applying it just to the outer corner of the lower lash line. Again, just going back in with the Refer Brush to blend out any harsh edges. And then here I'm just ensuring that the outer corner is connected between the top and the bottom eyelid. Next I'm going into the shade Sponsored and I'm going to use my Esam W21 brush and just applying it to the center of my top eyelid, connecting it to the dark brown shade we have at the outer corner. And again, just to eliminate harsh edges, I'm going back in with the Refer brush just to blend out the edges. Next I'm just flipping the Esam W21 brush and I'm going to use my Meron Mixing Medium, and the shade we're going to use is Dwellers. Again, this is one of those crumbly kind of textures, so 
it can have a lot of fallout, so that's the reason I'm using the mixing medium. I'm going to apply it to the inner one-third of the eyelid. And then with the Refer 03 brush, I'm going in with the shade Trust Issues. I'm just applying it to the inner corner of the eye, or the tear duct area, and bringing it to the inner corner of the bottom lash line. And then to finish off this look, I'm going in with the Pat McGrath Eye Pencil in Extreme Black for my top waterline. And then for mascara, I'm using the MAC Extended Play Giga Black Lash Mascara for my bottom lashes. And the Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir Mascara for my top lashes. And that's the eye look complete. And then for my lips, I've used the Isam Dual Ended Lip Liner in the shade Nude. And I've used the dark brown shade just as an outline for my lips. And then as my lipstick, I've used the MAC lipstick in the shade Persistence and blended that lip liner quite well with it. And that's the finished look. And here's a bonus look where I've pretty much used Ginger and Credit for my crease and outer corner. And then all over my eyelid is this beautiful shade, Lituation. It's a look I've been wearing quite a bit, so I thought I'll share it here as well. So that's again an option with Ginger and Credit. I've already primed my eyelids with the NARS Eye Primer and we're ready to start with the eyeshadows. The first color I'm going to use is the shade Supreme and I'm going to use that on my My Kit Co Pro brush which is 1.15. This is what it looks like. It's quite a large fluffy brush. It's great size for me to put it into my transition area. So dipping once into Supreme, this is how much color you get. And then just sweeping it in my crease area. So I'm taking this shade close to my brow bone, dipping again. So this is the shade peaking right above here, but still you want to maintain that skin tone right close to the brow bone, if that makes sense. So I'm leaving this portion bare and just applying this color right below it. Okay, so this is what it should look like. We will come back to this color in a bit, but let's move into the crease color. Now for the crease, I'm going into the shade Pinker. And for this, I'm going to use my Isom S33 brush. Any small brush will work for this step. So just dipping into Pinker and I'm going to apply this straight into my socket. Dipping back in. Okay, just creating that shape. This is the shade peeking through right here in the socket. Then I'm switching back to that first brush we'd used. Just blending out the edges and softening the shade up. If you feel like you've lost some of that lighter pink, you can go back into Supreme one more time. Just applying it to the edges of where we have pinker. That creates a smooth transition between the two shades. Next, with the same brush, the Isom S33, I'm dipping into Big Wig, the matte purple shade from the palette. I'm going to pack it first on the outer corner of the eye, just like so. Just gradually building it up on the outer corner of the eye. And then also taking it into the outer corner of the crease right there. This is what it should look like. Again going back into that big fluffy brush just to blend out the crease edges. Moving on to the bottom lash line. I'm going in straight into the shade Pinker, the second shade we'd used right in the socket. Taking that again on the same brush, the Isom S33, and just running it along my lower lash line. I'm going to dip a second time. Then switching to a smaller brush, 
This is the ESIM S31, so it's much smaller than the brush we've been using so far. Going into Big Wig, the purple matte shade, just applying it to the outer corner of the eye, right here, along the lower lash line. And just connecting it right here, making sure there is depth along the lash line on the top as well. And anywhere it looks a little patchy, I'm just going to use the smaller brush to apply the color. Next, I'm going back to the medium sized brush, the S33. I'm going to run pinker right at the edge of this purple shade, so right here, just so that the purple doesn't end abruptly to like a smooth transition between shades. But do you see at the edge right there, it's no longer just ending into purple. Okay, so once we have this, we're ready for the predominant shade of the mobile eyelid, which is Shukington. I'm going to take that on my eSIM W21 brush and I'm applying it dry. Just packing it on the eyelid. It's quite a nice blue tone purple and quite light compared to what I thought it was when I first saw swatches. It's a very smooth and soft shade, so really be careful with what kind of brush you use with this eyeshadow. It can crumble quite easily. And just to blend out the edges between the darker purple and this, I'm going back into the S33 Eason brush. And just running it along the edges. Again, I'm all about smooth transition. I do not like harsh edges. So that's how it's looking right now. And then with the same brush, so the W21, I'm going to run it on the inner corner and also along the inner portion of the lower lash line. That's the eyeshadows complete. For my waterline, I'm going to use the Jordana Easy Liner in the shade Purple Fusion. This shade actually matches Shukington quite well. So I'm just going to apply this along my bottom waterline. Now, if you don't have this, just feel free to use any eyeliner of your choice. You can use purple, you can use black, any of them will add intensity or you can just leave them bare. Now for my top waterline, because I do not like to see gaps between lashes, I'm going to use my Pat McGrath eyeliner in the shade Extreme Black. And then completing the look with mascara. This is the MAC Extended Play Giga Black Lash Mascara for my bottom lashes. And then before I apply mascara to my top lashes, I just remembered one last step I've done for the other eye going to use my Smith 212 brush, so any flat definer brush like this will work. I'm going to take the shade Credit. Now ideally, I would use black eyeshadow for this, but because I want to stick to this palette, just using Credit, I'm going to stamp it close to the lash line. So as you can see the difference from this side to this side, you can see that there's slight depth along the lash line right there. It doesn't add too much or take away too much from the look, but it's just something I like to do. So in an ideal world, I'd use black, but just sticking with this palette, I'm going to use credit, which is quite a dark brown. Okay, so I've taken it three fourths of the way in. And now for mascara for the top lashes, I'm going to use my Charlotte Tilbury Legendary Lashes Volume 2 Mascara. And that's the eye look complete. And then to finish off this look, I've used a light pink blush. So this is the shade I've used. This is by NARS in the shade Golu, but I think it was limited edition. So just feel free to replace it with any pink blush you may have. And then for my lips, I've used the MAC lipstick in the shade Whirl, and I've used a darker pink lip liner just on the outline to add some definition. But this is the finished look. Now this is what the palette looks like inside. You can see that there's a lot of variety in this palette. You can clearly see that there's more of a 
pinky purpley theme right here in this corner right here other than these two staples like champagne and then golden shade right here then you do have more of your neutral tones right here or like everyday tones so you have your brown so your transition crease shades right here here and then the stunning oops right here the dark brown shade which is called credit it's absolutely beautiful it's probably one of my favorite dark brown shades currently and then two other special shades which i absolutely love are sponsored and lituation just because they're quite unique in my collection shukington you may think that you may have purples like this <laughs> but this is again a very unique shade in my collection it's kind of a light medium kind of purple tone can't explain it all the other purples that i have are quite deep and quite intense although this is intense and beautiful and shimmery as you can see on my eyelid it just has that softness to it which i can't explain so that's a beautiful shade quite unique again the shade pinker is a very beautiful unique shade and i'm so glad i got it in this palette stunning very unique the shades that you may have replicates of are probably Sole, Zam, Vigilis, especially if you have the Natasha Denona Sunrise palette. Um, that shade is slightly more pinky, whereas this one is more red, slightly, just slight undertone differences, but they are quite close. And then Trust Issues is another shade that I love in other pans uh, because it has that gold shift to it, although it looks white here in the palette. And that's something I love to use in the inner corner as a highlight. But I have no complaints with this palette. It's absolutely beautiful. And Jackie Aina did such a fantastic job picking out the shades and the textures in this palette. I purchased this palette just a couple of months ago, but it has slowly crept into becoming probably my top five or top two palettes of the year. So if you haven't got your hands on it, I would highly recommend picking this one up. So those are the three looks and my overall thoughts about this palette i hope you enjoyed the tutorials and if you did as always please don't forget to hit that like button thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next one bye